the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Lou DeBella's DeBella Entertainment are proud to present the main event of the evening, the rematch, 12 rounds of boxing at super middleweight. Sponsored by American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Own the two disc unrated edition on DVD and HD DVD this Tuesday. Brought to you in association with HBO pay-per-view and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman John Bailey, Executive Director Keith Kaiser. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout. Patricia Mars Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Tony Weeks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, official weight, 164 pounds. This Olympic bronze medalist has a professional record of 27 victories, including 17 knockouts, with only one defeat and one bout even. From Little Rock, Arkansas, former undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Jermaine Bad Intentions. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red, official weight also, 164 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 32 bouts, 32 victories, including 29 knockouts. He's the blue collar fighting pride of Youngstown, Ohio. Title not on the line tonight. The middleweight champion of the world, Kelly. The Ghost Dowling! Okay, Kelly, Jermaine, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Okay, right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. Right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. Sometimes a fighter doesn't recover from a knockout. Sometimes an unbeaten fighter doesn't recover from his first defeat having lost his sense of dominance and destiny. How will Taylor handle this event, this opportunity to turn it around? Will it be round one of the rematch, or is it round eight in Atlantic City? Some of that depends on who lands the first big shot. Kelly Pavlik just missed with a glancing right hand chopping blow. Taylor goes to work with his jab, which some regard as his best weapon. And the crowd begins to chant for Pavlik. For them, this is a tactical start to the fight. Good thudding jab by Pavlik. Knocks Taylor back a half a step. Emmanuel, what do you see so far? Well, I, I, was, I was really concerned about who could establish the best jab because 
Jermaine's biggest punch has always been what attracted him to me was his left jab, his great left jab. And Kelly in the last fight surprised me by actually I jamming him. So it's going to be a jamming contest at the beginning. Whoever can establish a jab, I think the best is going to really just set the pace for this fight. Having trained Jermaine Taylor for four fights prior to this one, you see anything different that he's doing compared to what he did with you? Well, I think he's working behind his jab, and I think he seems to be a... I just see more determination in his face for this fight than he did in the first fight. Seems to be, and he's more settled. He was very hyped and very nervous for the last fight. Good jab by Taylor. Snaps Pavlik's head back. Pavlik returns the favor. Both have landed their jab in the first round. Good body shot by Pavlik as Taylor missed over the top with the right hand. Good jab by Taylor. Right and a left. A good sharp hook inside by Pavlik. Pavlik notably trying to keep his gloves high so they can't get caught by one of those big looping punches. See, Jermaine's strategy for this fight, I figure, was to try to outdo what he's doing. But the, the only thing that concerns me, when he gets tired or he gets under pressure, will he resort back to the habit he's dead for the last couple of years, which is going straight to the ropes, in addition to dropping his hands. Oh, hard right hand by Pavlik. How does Taylor respond? Left hook by Pavlik. Big left hook by Pavlik. But Jermaine Taylor comes back. Will Pavlik get over anxious? Taylor not badly hurt, though he's landed some big shots, has Kelly Pavlik. And now Jermaine Taylor with a shot. And a good left hook by Taylor. Both guys are making a mark in the first round, just as was the case in Atlantic City. Another right hand by Pavlik. That one a little bit more extended. Not quite as thudding as the first one. won the jamming contest in that round, but probably landed the bigger shots. Bingo! Jermaine, go to his weak side. He's going to his strong side, going to the right hand, baby. I'm not going to the right side. Hey, stay in behind your jab, son. Speed. Don't stay in the pocket. Once you get your punch off, flip. Go point. We talked about, we got them going backwards. Once that happens, we got it. But you got to stay busy. You got to keep your hands up. Don't get lazy in there. Beautiful. Come on, come Take on. a deep one for me. One more. One more. You can see Kelly land his signature punch, which is a jab followed by a right hand. And, it's, and Jermaine really got caught. He didn't do anything wrong with just perfect left jab that obstructed his vision. Jabs. Taylor 17 out of 51, 13 out of 41 jabs. So they were really even in the jab category according to Copy Box. And just as Larry said, Pavlik landed the bigger shots. Harold Letterman gives the first round to Kelly. significant is Pavlik's height, given that Jermaine Taylor is a tall middle white weight and has seldom, if ever, faced fighters taller than himself in his weight category. I think it's a, a good factor because of the fact that not only is he taller, he fights tall. And Jermaine has a tendency sometimes, as he goes on, and not only will he drop his left hand, but he bends his head down lower to make it no easier to get hit with right hands. And Kelly has studied him very well over that. But Kelly fights tall in addition to just being tall. This is round two, the round in which Taylor nearly knocked Kelly Pavlik out in Atlantic City, and Jermaine Taylor has landed some very healthy shots in the first minute of this round, continuing to jab very well, as is Pavlik. It's an offensive fight, and both guys are scoring. Well, I just see Jermaine is slowly starting to back back a lot, you know, and that's the one thing you can do. Jermaine has a good right hand, but he has a tendency as his promoter, Luda Bella, say is a bow and arrow type. He jabs and he kind of winds up on the right hand, and you can see it coming. It's a hard right, but you see it coming. That's why he doesn't have the amount of knockouts he should have. Where Kellis is a little bit more deceiving the way he shoots him. Well, and, and one other subtle difference. I think at the end of the day, Pavlik's punches are straighter. And straighter punches get to the target faster. Yeah, very simple and straight. But I see a lot of determination in the eyes of Jermaine Taylor. He's, he's 
just fighting just as if as he talked to you. He's fighting the fight of his life. This fight here, you can see he's determined to win this fight if it's any way possible. And I think he's going to end up now going back to the ropes more and more under the pressure. Well, the pressure is the real point here because Pavlik wants to keep Taylor working three minutes around, hoping that he tires later without jeopardizing himself by leaving himself too open. Good right hand, hand by Taylor. He left himself open that time. A couple of body shots. Taylor missed with an uppercut. Pavlik wants to keep backing Taylor up. He hasn't been able to do it all the time in this round. Jermaine need to get back to his jab. As long as he's jabbing in, you can set up. You can't see what he's going to do, but he's, right now he's not jabbing enough. And if you don't, Keller will slowly take control of the fight again. Left hook by Pavlik. Taylor answers with a right. Good jab by Taylor there. Pavlik with his own jab. Slowly, inexorably, Pavlik continues to make his point by going forward and backing Taylor up. That's the heart of his strategy, and it's working so far. Oh! I need some head movement in there, okay? Give this kid some head movement, and give this kid some fucking feints, all right? Yeah. What did he do? Come on. He ain't doing anything different, Kel. He's right there. He's not doing anything different. Look for that damn body. Okay, when you get him to these ropes, bang, bang, bang. Uh huh, uh huh. Another thing, Kelly, look at me. Look. You got your knee straight You're straightening that knee, bend it. Bend it. Okay. Here and here. I mean, you slip it in now. Drive it. Doing good. Looking good. Are we going to keep that left hand going? Protect yourself at all times. Here you see a right hand very similar to the right hand that caused all of the damage in the first round in the second, uh, se se second round in the first fight. It's almost identical punch. This is the type of fight that Taylor was doing well in in the third through the sixth rounds of the first fight. Second round was definitely better for Taylor. Harold Letterman gives him the round, evening it up on the scorecard. You saw in CompuBox stats between rounds that Jermaine Taylor's punch output has dropped tonight from what he threw in Atlantic City. That's a little bit misleading, perhaps, because the big punch output in the first two rounds in Atlantic City was partially produced by the assault on Pavlik in round two. Taylor landed 42 out of 50 power shots in the second round in Atlantic City. That's an extraordinary number, which we are not likely ever to see duplicated between the two again. Uh, Kelly is starting to find his range with his jab right now in this round here. And that's something that Jermaine needs to not let him. Jermaine got to get back to working his jab himself. When he pick, picks Kelly's jab off with his glove and then counters with his own jab, he out, he out jabs Kelly. He's got to get to doing it again. So he's letting Kelly shoot jabs, and Kelly's doubling up on his jabs now. Manuel, and then there are two, two and then a right hand. Manuel, you're sounding like the trainer standing <laughs> in the fighter's corner. <laughs> And it's obviously why you have to do that. You've spent a couple of years in this corner. Jermaine Taylor insisted in a meeting with us yesterday that he would go to the body much more than in the first fight. That has not happened so far, though there were a couple of good body shots in round two. Alec for 66 punches in each of the first two rounds. He would like to get it up to about 80 or 90. That's the pace at which he really likes to fight. Chopping right hand across the top by Taylor after two body shots by Kelly Pavlik. So it's Pavlik who started to think body a little bit. Perhaps trying to get that punch count up. Pavlik is seeing them coming a little better. Yeah, Kelly is fighting the same fight he fought before. I think Jermaine is showing a lot more intensity, a little bit more patient tonight. But uh, Kelly is fighting the same basic fight, which is to try to eventually start dominating the fight with his jab. But uh, Jermaine, if he works his jab, Jermaine can set up a lot of things because he has a much faster jab, left jab than Kelly. Here's the Pavlik jab. Stop, 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 stop. Neither fighter really loves infighting. They both like to operate from punchless distance. Right hand and a left hook by Taylor. Pavlik covered up. Now goes back to work. Good jab by 
Taylor Taylor. Well, fighting a much more disciplined fight than the first time. A boxer's fight. Looks like he's learned something from watching the tapes of the first fight. Ha! Listen, you can't just stand straight in front of this kid. Bend those knees, baby, and work. Bend up, bend up. Get the bucket up. Get the bucket up. Bend up. Up. What's that? You win that round? Yeah. He's a tail right there. Step on with the right hand. How's it feel? Come on, babe. Nice to be missed on the show. Come on, sir. Good job. Good job. Hey, breathe. Give me breath. So it appears a little bit, okay? Slip so a little bit. has thrown twice as many, but they've landed about the same number. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through through it? I'll get you two rounds to one. 29, 28, Jermaine Taylor. Jim, in rounds two and three, I thought Jermaine just landed the green of hardest shots with that right hand. I mean, he really, really landed some nice right hands. So he won those two rounds of clean punching. Kelly Pavlik backed him up, landed the left jab, and some good right hands to win the first round. Two to one, Jermaine Taylor, based on clean punching. Fantastic job of staying in the center of the ring. We've had four fights, a total of 28 rounds on this boxing card so far. And not a single clinch that I can remember in any of the four fights. No clinches here. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. Let him up, let him up. tactical round of the fight so far, and the crowd sort of settles in as though for the long haul. But what's happening, the most dominant punch in the fight now turned out to be the left jab of Kelly. The man has got to get back. He's, he's winning, he's throwing a lot of punches that are not landing as clean as it seems to the crowd, but Kelly's consistently just pumping that left jab all the time. And gradually, we start to see a pattern that developed toward the end of the first fight, which is the Jermaine wings punches to the outside, sometimes both hands, left and right, while Pavlik resolutely keeps going straight up the middle. And his jab, his jab connect percentage is getting to be very high right now. Good left hook by Pavlik off the straight right hand. Another right hand for Pavlik. Taylor with a good jab, and another good jab. Needs to keep working it. That's what happens when he lands his jab. Good left hook by Taylor. Well, I think he's going to be smart and make sure he places the punches and not get too excited like he did the first fight. Body shot by Kelly Pavlin. More and more, he's investing in those to go with the jab. See, even though Kelly Right has hand by Pavlik and another. Taylor jabs again to move him back. Another hard right hand by Pavlik, and Taylor comes back with a wild yeah. winging left hook. Good yeah. fight. Whatever else you can say, the knockout and the defeat has had a in positive there. effect Come on, on Kurt, Jermaine Kurt, Taylor. Listen, we even it up there, okay? We're in there now. Listen, so all we got to do, we got to get through the next couple rounds, okay? This kid is fading already. He's yeah. starting yeah. to fade. Yeah. All right, you hear me? He's starting to fade. Start. Big, big one. Get that second breath. How you Calm down, babe. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Relax. You get hit if you stay. Relax. In the middle. All right. Then when you're, where you're not going to stay? In the middle. All right. Come on. You can do it. Just no, all no, start no, working no. out. Pop, pop. Right hand. Right hand down the pop. Absolutely. If you throw that thought, throw that right hand short right over his jab, and you step over. Easy night. 
Pass to Lexi there, right hand. Happy Box sees the same thing you're seeing, Emmanuel. In the fourth round, Kelly Pavlik, 16 out of 49 in the jab category, to 8 of 22 for Taylor. So Kelly Pavlik focusing on the jab, stepping up the tempo, building his punch count. Maybe behind on the scorecards, but is fighting the strategy he wants to fight. Well, I think both guys are fighting a little bit so what they wanted to do, but, but Jermaine right now was, I thought would be trying to move around and get him more angles, but he's more and more gradually starting to, you know, uh, do less jabbing, which I think he needs to jab a lot more, and then set up the sneaky punches over top. But so far, it's a very good competitive fight, and Jermaine is throwing his punches, I think, a lot shorter when he does throw his power punches than he did the first fight. Even though Kelly Patrick had the high knockout rate, he never, I've never considered him a, a really big puncher. He's a systematic guy who gra gradually wears you down, and then he stops you, but not just a single big one punch. Man. And that's what he's going for tonight, to try to gradually grind Jermaine down. Isn't that true of most knockout artists, Emmanuel? The only time you hear us with one of them is Mike Tyson. These are guys who knocked out quality titles in the first and second rounds. That was punching power. But uh, Kelly's on the line of the great fighters like Marvin Hagler, systematically just four guys down. How does Pavlik's punching power compare to that of Marvin Hagler? I think Marvin may have been a little better puncher, believe it or not. But see, Marvin fought so many top quality name fighters of his world that he didn't knock him out that easy. But uh, Kelly hasn't had, not as his fault, just not many good top middleweights up there. But I think Kelly's just a good puncher, not a great puncher, but he puts things together so well that he gradually wears him down and then knocks him out. Jermaine Taylor is punching more accurately tonight than has been his norm in the past. The work rate of Kelly is, is here becoming to be a bigger, bigger factor. You think that Jermaine does not have the stamina to go three minute rounds hard back to back to back? I don't know, but this is, he's so far he's been doing extremely well and he's, you know, very, very conservative, placing his punches. But uh, I don't know, after going down the stretch, that's what Kelly's depending on is to wear him down in about six rounds or seven rounds. Right hand by Pavlik brings blood from Taylor's nose. Left nostril now leaking blood. Pavlik will go after it again with right hands. Jab is setting up a lot of things and it's fun to bother Jermaine a lot simply because he's not doing nothing about it. He should pick and return, but he's, and, and that's what he should do more often. Baby, we've got to get more body. Come on, baby, we've got to get more body. We got to, we got to break that body down, baby. B, they are still looking good. We looking good. We looking good. I want to flare it every night, now and then. Offset it. If I go at the same pace, I want to, I want you to offset that. It's gonna come, baby. Okay? Huh? Come on. It's there. It's there. It's a matter of time. Here you see. Kelly Pavlik once again landing this left jab. I mean, notice the gloves are not even closed. It's more than just a camouflage. He uses it to blind you over your left eye before he lands his right hand. And that's why he steadily keeps pumping those jabs. And when he feels his right, he's shooting those right hands in there after. But Jermaine is doing a great job right now, pretty much just outpowering him with combinations and not fighting because he's not matching him jab for jab. Kelly Pavlik, 24 out of 74 by CompuBox count in the fifth round. Taylor, 20 out of 43. Pavlik's work rate beginning to show up, but Taylor still landing a higher percentage of his punches. Those fast hands of his. Something that should be noted. I know that Taylor has had problems with stamina uh, in the past, but Kelly Pavlik has only gone past eight rounds once, and that was a ninth round knockout. 
Yeah, but he's still so relaxed. You, you look at the study of the body like but he's so relaxed in there where Jermaine, even though he's landing punches, he's still tense. He just he just that's his nature of Jermaine. He's a really high tense, uh, hyper type guy. And that think that burns up a lot of his energy. But Kelly's totally relaxed. Stop, I got you, I got you. Preoccupied so much with the jab of Kelly, and that's what Kelly wants him to do. That is nine straight unanswered punches by Pavlik. And that's what he's doing. 10, 11, 12. They aren't landing necessarily, but there finally is an answer from Taylor, who seemed to be trying to catch the rest in the middle of the round, and now rips Kelly Pavlik with a hard right hand. But the difference is Kelly's consistent, though. Jermaine is having explosions and then takes a break, and Kelly comes right back and keeps pumping. Keep working, keep working. And Jermaine is punching in explosions and then won't rest, but Kelly won't let him rest. The relentless work rate of Kelly Pavlik, the dynamic explosions of Jermaine Taylor. Good body work by Good Taylor, body Taylor which is unusual for him. Nice, nice. Stop, stop, stop. Kelly, Kelly can't match Jermaine for hands for him. Just trying to win by consistency. Jermaine is placing his punches very good, and thus far may have really won this round. Stop, stop, I'm up, I'm up. I can't see that. Too much difference in the number of punches thrown and landed. But the crowd gets excited over those big wide punches, and then maybe some of the judges may too. Hard left hand by Taylor. Stop Pavlik in his tracks. In addition to everything else. Fighter showing good chins tonight. Ten seconds to go to the halfway point of the fight. Ah. How's your condition, man? Good, good, good. great, great. Because his ain't, his ain't. Believe me, okay? But you can't stand straight up. Gotta keep pushing him, keep pushing him back, keep pushing him back, keep pushing him back. Well, halfway through the fight, okay? He can't go this pace, I'm telling you, for 12. Read through your mouth. Read through your mouth. No, no worry. Read right. through your mouth. Be with you. Come on. Come on. Be with you. Be with you. One more. Beautiful. Five shots, good. Let's keep doing it. Beautiful body, baby. Still, you need to start going to the weak side. I know, coach. Come little on. more body, a little more weak Every time you throw that jab, you bust with the right hand every time. Copy box numbers in the six. Pavlik 17 out of 66. Taylor throwing 31 punches. His low output of the fight. Landing 13. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim. Four rounds to two. 58. 56, Jermaine Taylor. Jim, I gotta say something about judging boxing, what the judges should be looking for. I'm not counting punches as a judge. What I'm doing is I'm looking to see who's doing more damage. I'm saying, who's hurting the other guy worse? And I think that Jermaine Taylor is the stronger, more powerful guy so far. Four to two, Jermaine Taylor. I have the fight even. shots even better than he's landed them now. This is the round, of course, in which Pavlik eliminated Taylor in Atlantic City, and so far the body language for Taylor in the seventh looks better tonight than was the case back in September. Interesting country box uh, observation is that Taylor's power punch outfit has dropped dramatically. He's throwing, by CompuBox count, fewer than half as many power punches tonight as he threw in Atlantic City, which 
maybe will help him to preserve the stamina that he said he lost in the first fight. You think the extra few pounds means anything? Well, in this Emmanuel, case, it, 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 does, it doesn't look like it's making. Yeah, I think both guys are a little stronger maybe than they were in the last fight. But Jermaine's hand speed is right now a big, big factor for him in this fight. Good body shot by Taylor. Havlick still coming forward when he can. Stop, stop. I got you. Double that fucking jab, okay, my man? Yes, yes, that's where I need you, right there, okay? When you back him up, whip that right hand underneath right that fucking right elbow. You got me? Yes. All right, baby. Come on. You got five more to go. Copy box average per round through round seven. Havlick 21 out of 69, Taylor 15 out of 38. Can he beat Kelly Pavlik throwing significantly fewer punches per round? We shall see. Well, when a guy with the hand speed of Jermaine, even if he doesn't land clean blows sometimes, it creates a lot of excitement like the flare at the end to the body, even though they may be partially blocked, but it creates a lot of excitement with the crowd and Alton Town with the judges which can neutralize the consistent work of a guy like Kelly Pat in terms of scoring. a little bit more to get a blow. Taylor doing a much better job tonight of handling Kelly Pavlik's right hand than was the case in Atlantic City. Pavlik hasn't landed as many solid shots with the right. Yeah, but that was when he was exhausted and fatigued when he was landing the punches. He keeping his hands up very good and high tonight, which was very impressive to me, but I'm just worried about him starting to back. If he doesn't back back to those ropes as he was tired. to school on the first fight, being more deliberate, and trying to protect yeah, stop, themselves stop, 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 a little stop, stop, bit better. So what we have is an intense boxing contest. 
Havlick blocked those shots with his gloves. Landed his jab. Sneaks in a right hand. Taylor lands a big right hand shot. Tries to come back with a left hook. Havlick straightens himself out. Keeps coming forward behind free the jab. Free, hands free, hands free. Stop, 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 stop. That's a bell. The exchanges just at the bell have been very good. Shake no fucking hands with nobody. Yeah, quit shaking his hand. He's looking, Fuck for, it. Your, he's looking for your for your uh, kindness. Listen That's to me. Shit. Yeah. You can't listen to me, baby. I hear you. Okay? I'm all ears. You win, you win. Did you pick it up? Yes, sir. Okay, then let's do it, all right? What Can round is it? What round we got? All right. All right, all right babe. Looking good. Right, Keep boxing. Right. Keep, Keep picking him up. Pick him apart. Pick it up now. Keith, let's pick it up, yeah, baby. Pick it up. Jab numbers from CompuBox in round eight. Pavlik 21 out of 39. Taylor 7 out of 19. Taylor did land eight of his 11 power shots, but he only threw 30 punches in the round. It's even on Harold Letterman's scorecard so far. Larry, you've talked in the past about Kelly Pavlik's poise under pressure. It was an indicator of it there when Jack Lowe said, listen to me between rounds, and Pavlik said, I'm all ears, as though having a conversation in a bar. Well, that speaks to the relaxation that Emmanuel referenced earlier. He is one falcon who hears the falconer. And you know, he, he's doing, when you consider, uh, he's not no super coordinated stop, guy. Stop, 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 not, not gifted with a lot of superior skills and a lot of boxers hands. But just his intelligence and even his consistency is what's got him where he is. Whereas Jermaine has got way more skills. He, just the idea that Jermaine just could be consistent and fight consistently for the whole round, he would be unbeatable. Well, you're talking about skills. I don't know how you measure it. It's a skill to be able to follow, fight intelligently. It's a skill to be able to fight persistently over a long fight. Skill is more than just hand speed, in my view. I'll never forget once when John McEnroe said to me, I got more talent in my little finger than Yvonne Lindell has in his whole body. And I said, John, do you have the talent to go work out for eight hours at a time? Exactly. Stop. I got you. I got you. One left hook by Taylor. Another good left hand by Taylor. Rips Pavlik again. Pavlik keeps coming forward. Taylor's eyes are swelling shut on both sides. Probably not enough yet to bother his vision, though. Well, it's interesting to me that Kelly keeps uh, throwing that right hand and Jermaine keeps his left hand up blocking it all the time. I'm surprised that Kelly hasn't changed up and, and shot a left uppercut or a right uppercut. He's doing the same thing and then Jermaine is catching well, it. keeps it. working, why would he change it? I don't think he's getting close enough to throw the uppercut Emmanuel because Taylor's backing up. Taylor's punch is winging there and missing. And now, now there's a good shot. And Kelly comes right back, continue, and the beat goes on. And Kelly has been the one coming forward for most of the fight. Which impresses many judges. Ah. The man need more punches. Need more punches, baby. You're hurting him? Huh? Three. Take a deep breath, boy. Round 10. It's round 10, baby. Now it's time to work. It's work now. It's work time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, raise the mouth. Go like that. All right. All right, come on. Wipe him, wipe him, wipe him. Okay, listen. 
We got to fight now, man. Okay, we got to work him. It's a close fucking fight, man. We got to work him. Okay, do not let this motherfucker take this off you, baby. Okay? Okay. We got to work. You got this kid going backwards. Don't let up on him. Don't let up on him. All right, baby. Little sweat. Get the bucket. Get the bucket. This has become a repetitive litany in the ninth round. Kelly Pavlik threw 49 jabs. Jermaine Taylor threw 36 total punches, according to CompuBox. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Look at you. Five rounds to four. 86, 85, Kelly Pavlik. Jim, who do you like? The harder hitter or the busier guy? Now, the last three rounds, seven, eight, and nine, I like the busier guy. Kelly Pavlik coming forward, throwing more jabs, you know, throw that right hand behind the left jab, backing up Jermaine Taylor, but obviously, Jermaine Taylor, the harder hitter. I went with the busier guy the last three rounds. I thought Taylor just didn't do enough. Five, four, Pavlik. I have it six, three, Pavlik. I don't know how you can tell that Taylor is the heavy hitter. He... That's that's what a judge has got to do, Larry. I know, but I don't know how you can tell. What has he done? He's landed some good punches, so is Pavlik. But uh, be that as it may, um, Pavlik thinks it's a close fight, and this is the farthest that Pavlik has ever gone in a price fight. He's never gone to the 10th round before. I got a question. If Taylor's the harder hitter, why you. is he all swollen up and Pavlik's <laughs> not? Because... <laughs> Kelly Pavlik has landed the most consistent punch in this entire fight has been the left jab of Kelly Pavlik. That's been consistently. Everything else is in spots, but the left jab has landed consistently. Nobody's ever questioned Jermaine Taylor's guts. Courage is perhaps his greatest asset. So he'll be here for the next three rounds. And this is the first time in his professional career, in his 33rd fight, this is the first time Kelly Pavlik's ever been to round 10. It's old news for Jermaine Taylor, who's had many 12-round fights. And center is on the outside of the first round. Jermaine hasn't been hit with too many right hands. Hard right hand over the top by Taylor. Pavlik goes back to work with the jab. Pavlik landed a very good short right hand on the inside. Taylor took it very well. in Atlantic City. And the fact that both are four on, pounds heavier on, tonight, both have shown world-class chance. This is Taylor's best round in a little while. Havlick's going to work hard in these last 30 seconds to try to win it. Good jab by Taylor. Two good left hooks by Taylor. He's busier in this round. Taylor's starting to throw more combinations than has been the case in recent rounds. Stop, I got you. Vegas, Nevada. Two rounds. 11th round, guys. You have to double the jab, okay? Hey, you need through your mouth, baby. Rounds, okay? You have to back this kid up. Read through your you mouth. have to beat him. We need these two rounds to work hard. Read through your okay? mouth. Okay? All right? Yep. Okay, babe. Do you see how you connect the beautiful, beautiful left hook to the body? Yep. yep. You got to do more than that. You got to get busy. Okay? Two rounds to take it. So, all right. Two, when you throw that one, two, take that two down low. Come on, I'm going to see that right like hand off the round. Off the jail, sit that right hand down low. That's right. Off the jail. Send him used to the jail up there. He gonna fall back in. Shoot that right hand right here. Very nice. Three. Woo. All right. Okay. Two rounds. In the tenth round, Taylor threw 46 punches. That's his highest number in several rounds. And he landed 15. It's the first round in quite a while in which he outlanded Kelly Pavlik. Now we go to the championship rounds 11 and 12. Once again, Pavlik's never been here. Taylor's been here twice with Bernard Hopkins, with Winky Wright, and on various other occasions as well. And on the last round, Kelly looked a little sloppy, a little fatigued as he's throwing his punches, but they don't have the much crispness that they had a little bit better early in the fight. And Jermaine is still punching when he does punch, with the same no, speed and crispness. He just doesn't punch that often, but when he does, he's very explosive and very sharp. 
He has been to the ropes one time in this fight. I'll give him credit for that right. He did a, a, a fantastic job of staying off the ropes. Conquering what has been stop, criticized stop, stop, stop. relentlessly as one of his worst bad habits. There hasn't been a clinch in the fight. Also, he's done a good job of blocking right hands, too. Good body shot by Taylor with the left. Tries to come back with the right. Stop, I got you. These last five minutes of the fight may decide it. Stop, stop. Do you think that regardless of the outcome of this fight, Emmanuel Zach, Taylor has redeemed himself from the first fight? Definitely, he's not only he's redeemed himself, and also Kelly Pavlik has seemed to have been come down in his image a little bit because he was riding across the two great wins over Miranda and Taylor. Okay. So I think that Jermaine Taylor's image goes up, and I think so slightly a little bit. I think that Kelly's well, just came down a little bit slightly. Well, if you're expecting a knockout every time, is it? But um, Stop. I don't believe in that that sort of stuff. But Taylor has fought as well as he can. He's fought smart. And he's showing now that he's fighting tough as well. That's the closest thing to a real clinch that we've seen all night, right there. Came in the 11th round. Body shot by Pavlik, right hand over the top. In case you missed it, about a minute ago, there was a warning to Taylor for low blows. That was the first real warning of the fight. Stop, stop, stop. And this is what happens, a vicious body shot underneath instead of throwing a regular one-two to the head. And I think that took a lot of energy out of Jermaine. From that point on, he's been very weak. Havlick landed 24 punches in the round, according to Copy Box. Taylor landed only 10. He has one total of the fight. The last minute of the round clearly belonged to Kelly Pavlik. What now happens in round 
energy. But Taylor is still coming up with those big moments and fast flurries. Jab and right hand by Taylor. By Pavlik. Taylor with a left hook. Second big clinch of the fight. Does Taylor not sense that he's got to put on a big flurry here, that he's got to try to do some serious damage, Emmanuel? I think he feels it, but I think he's very tired. He's doing the best that he can. I mean, looking at his legs and, his, you, and his body motion, he's, he's a totally exhausted. Pamplick bounces back into position yeah. and goes back to work with the jab. The energy is all Pavlik. The desperation is helping Taylor. when he needs to throw. Jab and right hand by Pavlik. Body shot by Pavlik. I got you, let him go. Taylor not getting off anything significant during that stretch. Right hand missed, left hand landed for Taylor. Good body shot for Jermaine. Going forward one last time. Ten seconds to go. And very few clinches. I don't know how Harold has it yet. 115, I, 113, Pavlik. I had it 116 to 112, but um, my guess is the scores will be a little closer to what Harold has. Here are the judges who'll be scoring the fight. Patricia Jarman, veteran judge here in Nevada, 66 title fights, one of the five Nevada judges who preferred Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins in their two 12-round matches here in Las Vegas. Dave Moretti, also one of the five Nevada judges who preferred Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins. The only one who didn't was Jerry Roth in the first of the two fights between the two. And then Glenn Crowbridge, 12 title fights, least experienced of the three, had Oleg Moskayev ahead of Hasim Rachman 105-104 in August of 2006. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Dave Moretti, 117, 111. Patricia Moss Jarman, 115, 113. Glenn Trawbridge, 116, 112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated from Youngstown, Ohio, Kelly, the goal.